So there's quite a few ways that we can save time when we're on the color page. And I thought that would be cool to first show you laying out the timeline really quickly so you can kind of grasp how these different methods work because it really has to do with where we're pulling the media from as well as we'll dive into when to use uh, the different methods and kind of like use cases for it. Now, you don't ever have to follow these specific methods I'm gonna be talking about here, but they definitely can save quite a bit of time especially when we're working on larger projects where we might be using the same color grade from shot to shot. So let's just quickly go over. All right, so starting off with our project here, let's just grab some of these clips and bring them in. I'm not gonna use a lot of them, uh, but this one here, uh, there's like a little part where she puts her hand up. So let's grab that. I'm gonna put this over here because I remember when I was looking in here, there was like this little section where she does this. So we'll grab that. Doesn't really matter. But here is the the point that I wanted to I wanted to make here. So sometimes uh, we would sometimes we will uh, use a clip multiple times in a timeline. And if the camera isn't moving around crazy, maybe it's something like this where it's kind of staying in the same area, but we're using different segments of that clip. That's going to be something to keep in mind because we can actually use that to our advantage. And I'll quickly show you here. So let's add in some of these other clips that I haven't uh, grabbed yet. Whoops. Let me do that. I and oh, great. All right, if I zoom in here, we can see that this is 53, 74, 73, 74 again. So those two are used multiple times. Uh, a quick thing that I'm just going to do here to save a little bit of time on the aesthetic of this is I'm just gonna go into color manage. And what that's gonna do is it's going to automatically do the color space transform. There is a node that you can use for that, but this just saves a ton of time, especially if you're shooting in log. And the main reason for using um, color manage that saves a lot of time is if you're working in a timeline that is mixed media, meaning that you have like multiple types of cameras and color spaces and everything going on. So if you have like a GoPro and an iPhone and a black magic camera and they're all um, completely different uh, color profiles, color spaces, all that, uh, as long as the metadata is there, we'll be able to match all of them up and get them all to look pretty much the same in the same color space and doing the color space transform um, automatically. So that's how that works. I don't really wanna make the video about that, but uh, so let's go over to the color page. And then in here, the thing that I was talking about before, if you just put in here color space, there's that color space transform. This used to be like the old school way of doing it, picking your input and your output color space. But now uh, that came, that, that, uh, Color Manage came out in uh, DaVinci Resolve 17. So anyways, so this would be typically how we would see a project by default. Everything would just come in and we wouldn't see anything unique. I've seen a couple of people saying, oh, what is that one little icon? I see it, but I don't know how to remove that. And what they're probably talking about is what is referred to as a remote grade. So I'll quickly show you. I'll just take all my clips and we're going to have them uh, go over to a remote grade. And as you can see here, now we have this little icon here and a little icon here. Now remember, those are both the same shot. So what this is going to allow us to do is if I make one adjustment here, this one is also going to get that adjustment. Now you could say, well, I can just copy and paste color grades. Well, you can. So if I go over to here and let's say we make this pink and I copy it over here, right, by just using middle mouse. They're looking the same, so it's kind of what you're saying there, but here's the thing that is different when we're, when we're working with just local grades. If I go and I adjust this one to something else, that's not going to affect this one here because they're not linked together in any way. So you could say, oh, well, what if we used what is referred to as groups? And so we can do that as well. So what we'll do is we'll quickly, let's just reset this one here. And we'll take, let's say these two clips, right? So I just hold, held down uh, command or control, depending on which platform you're on, this one, and then clicking on this one. We can right click in here, and then we can go into uh, add into a new group. 
So doing that, group one, now there is a completely different icon here. So we have this icon here and this icon here, and we can see that this icon is for a group. Now a group works slightly different than a remote grade. So the remote grade on both of these, I can simply go like this, it's going to affect both of them. If I come over here and start working on this, we'll see that we're just affecting just this one and not this one, but they're in a group. So what's going on that's different here? There are multiple types of, um, uh, uh, I don't know exactly what to call this. There are multiple uh, processes of uh, going through the node tree. So if we take a look here, we're in clip view. If we click on all of these others, we're also in the clip nodes, right? But because this is in a group, we have multiple different options. We have pre-group, clip, or group, pre-clip, clip, and then post-group, and then timeline. So uh, order of operation, it goes from the top to the bottom when it's applying the different nodes. And if I come over here to the one that has the local, we'll see that in here, all we have is clip and timeline. There is no group. So what that means is I can actually take, let's just take this one and, um, this one and this one, we can add them into a group as well. Or I can come into here and say, okay, I want that to be uh, added to group one, assigned to that. So now all of these are added together. So if I go into, let's say this one here, and we go over into a post group, and let's add on something that I like. So let's actually come down and we'll put on film convert. I was thinking about doing uh, a couple of videos about film convert, but it allows you to uh, emulate different uh, film stocks pretty much. So we will put this on here and I'm just, uh, I'm kind of, actually, you know what? We'll just go to a black and white one. Is that black and white? No, it's not black and white. We'll find a black and white one. So this makes most sense. Okay, perfect. So now we have a black and white emulation on the post group and we can see that they were all affected by that. But we can also go into the clip and let's say we would add in like um, crazy saturation or contrast actually. Let's go crazy contrast. We'll see that both of these on, under clip are getting that same contrast, but they're also being affected by the post group. So there are multiple different angles here. I'm hoping that you guys kind of understand this. So now you might be asking, why would we use both of these methods and when would we use them? A lot of the times where we're going to be using a remote grade is when we're using a shot and we're cutting back to it multiple times. So this would be a perfect example of, let's say you have an interview where we have multiple cameras and they're just pointing to the same thing. So if we have two people uh, and three cameras, let's say, you would, you would only really have to do three grades if they were all static shots, right? Just one for each person and then one for the wide shot. That would save some time there. So where would we use a group? A group, uh, the best example really would be, think of a movie and when you're adding in that color grading, actually adding in that emotion for that scene, you could do it in the actual group itself. So that's why we would do one over the other. They really save a ton of time, especially if you only have to really do it you know, one time or you have one thing to constantly change instead of doing everything on the clip level. So think if you have 40 different shots for, you know, a, um, a three or four minute scene, um, there would be a lot of issues if you had to go through that whole thing and completely take all of the greens out or you know subdue the greens or bright you know add more contrast in the greens for all of them when it's just the overall aesthetic of uh, the mood that you're trying to convey it's not really a color correction that would be shot to shot it would be nice to have it in a group because you only ever have to change one set of nodes that were in that post group um, and then it would affect all of them. And the same way with when we were doing a remote grade, we only have to uh, adjust that one set of nodes and it will affect all of the other iterations of that particular shot. So that's the biggest thing to remember here is 
the remote grade is always going to be based off of the same shot. So whatever that shot is, every time that it comes up on the timeline, if it's set up as a remote grade, then it will always do that. And you can take the different clips and everything. I remember I'm saying a whole shot. You can take those different clips and you can convert them. So I didn't really show that here, but uh, quickly I'll just go into here and I can right click in here and then... Is it in here? Yeah. You click in here and then you can go into, uh, oh, let's go back over to clip. Here we are. And we can convert, so you can copy the remote grade to the local. You might say, hey, you know, that shot looks great, but can you tweak this little bit in just that one particular clip that's in the time, in, in the, um, in, in the progression of that scene. So you'd be able to just turn that one into a local and then you can do multiple uh, versions of that local if you ever need it to. So that's the main difference between local, remote, and the groups. And then you also have the timeline, which I didn't really go into, but think of like adding overall grain for the whole uh, film or something like that. So those are the different options. Hopefully they save you some time when you're working on your next project. It does take a little bit of um, mental gymnastics when you're remembering to kind of like silo that aspect of your um, when you go, when you come into the color grade aspect of it to remember to put them into that completely different, uh, set of nodes. So like that post grade or that post group, um, to remember to put them in there. But, but once you do, and you're able to break up your color grade, you can save a ton of time, especially when you have, uh, someone over your, uh, shoulder, let's say the director and they're saying, okay, can we adjust this a little bit, adjust that a little bit. You only have to tweak two uh, nodes and then the whole uh, whatever the group is or the remote grade all of the elements that are affected by those two um, are automatically changed so that's the tip for today hopefully you guys you know learned something from this if you have any questions shoot them down in the comments if you want to know more about this kind of stuff i have a whole website dedicated where you can actually get certifications in davinci resolve if that's something that you fancy i would also take say take a look at the new tools that i just recently introduced on the website the animation helper it does exactly what you think it does it helps with creating complex animations with just one click you can adjust a whole bunch of animations but yeah, there's a ton of stuff on the website. Like I said, take a look there. But with that being said, my name's Jared. Thanks so much for watching this one. Until the next one, guys. Peace.